Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, DICE has actually put out another update only two weeks after they already updated the game uh, in September. So, this is actually pretty unexpected for the time frame of it because typically they don't release updates in a pretty speedy fashion, but this time they actually did. Uh, this update coincides with the Liquidators event on October 11th. Uh, if you don't know what the Liquidators event, I'll link that video in the description and I'll put a card up on the screen right now. But this new update is named Battlefield Update 2.1.1, and its main focus is apparently uh, some smaller quality of life improvements, uh, some gunplay improvements, some advances nerfs, and some recoil fixes for some weapons, uh, particularly on console. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We're getting pretty close to 33,000 subs, so thank you guys so much for that. And without further ado, let's just get into the update notes. Uh, this is not a big patch, but I do also think that it comes with new weapons. So let's just start breaking this down by section. So in the general section, there's actually only one listed change. Setting mouse raw input off in settings will no longer completely disable the ability to move the mouse in game. This has actually been a problem since the beta of the game, and they're just now fixing it, uh, I don't know, a year after the game's been out. So. Good job, DICE. You guys are awesome over there. Uh, in the map section, renewal, it was sometimes possible to deploy under the map that has been fixed. And they also fixed several areas on the Conquest 64 layout that would incorrectly flag you as out of bounds, which would result you in you dying. In the weapons section, firing continuously with weapons while using a controller would sometimes desync the recoil between the client and the server, which is obviously extremely bad because it creates confusion between the player and what's actually going on in the game. Uh, as a result, shots missed their target when they should have hit them. This has been resolved. If this has been going on since the start of the game, this would explain the amount of controller players and just console players complaining that there's just something that feels off. So any controller player or console player, uh, let me know in the comment section, if you play this update, do you actually notice any sort of difference? Because that is a gigantic problem that I don't think has been mentioned previously to this. Another very important change within the weapons section is vault weapons now properly apply recoil reduction when playing on console. And what they mean by playing on console is they actually got that wrong in the patch notes. What they mean is when playing on controller, because the weapon recoil is actually lower for people that play on controller, whether or not you're playing on console or PC. And if you think I'm you know, lying about this, I'll link another video in the description and put a card up uh, where I actually demonstrate that. But apparently, if you use a vault weapon on controller, you would not get the controller recoil reduction. Reduction, which would of course result in higher recoil, which is not good, especially considering the M16 is the vault weapon and it already had insane recoil for PC players. Another important change for vault weapons in All Out Warfare is they actually have matched the draw speed for vault weapons now, which is incredibly important because the draw speed of a weapon can actually determine whether or not you win a gunfight or not just based off of your reaction time and you stopping, so that's a huge fix. And another huge fix, which will actually put the M16 in line with the other assault rifles, is they've fixed the headshot multiplier for the M16. I think it used to be 1.25, now it's 2.15, so it's it's obviously a huge upgrade. And specifically, the Avancies have seen a nerf, finally. They say that the Avancies was highly accurate, and coupled with its large magazine size, meant it was too powerful during sustained fire. We've reduced its accuracy to compensate. Uh, they, re they increased its base recoil by uh, something of like 0.4, which I don't know know how that is actually going to translate in game but we'll see and they also doubled its uh spread increase per shot which should actually have a noticeable effect because this gun was just a complete laser beam uh, i doubt these changes will be enough though because 200 rounds and still its rpm is insane uh the gun's going to be usable no matter what Further weapon changes include weapon changes to the dreaded and hated K-30. They list that the K-30 is intended to be a close-range SMG and was too accurate at medium distance. Its accuracy at range has been decreased as a result. Uh, the minimum dispersion angle has been increased from 0 0.15 to 0 0.18. Dispersion per shot increased from uh, 0 0.09 to 0.15, which is actually a gigantic difference uh, if you're talking about uh, spread increase per shot. And dispersion rate reduced from 20 to 4. Moving on to the MP9, which has also seen some changes in this update. The MP9 is also intended to be a close-range SMG, and similarly to the K30, received an accuracy penalty. This I actually don't agree with, because the K30 has 300 RPM over the MP9, and the MP9 was already nerfed in a previous patch, so I thought it was in a completely fine spot in comparison to other weapons, but DICE did not. So they increased its spread increase per shot from 0 0.06 to 0 0.11, and minimum dispersion angle increased from 0.14 to 0.17. The M16 has also seen some changes. Uh, the M16 
they say did not match performance of the other assault rifles, and I would have to agree. Just because its recoil was too high, you know, the, the way the visual recoil of the uh, vault weapons in All Out Warfare, that was also pretty bad. So what they did to try to get the M16 in line with the other weapons is they reduced its base recoil, they uh, reduced its first shot recoil multiplier, which is actually a huge change, and they also reduced its spread increase per shot. So overall, the M16 should actually be fairly usable and competitive. And last but not least, some very, very welcome changes to the M60, which was probably the worst LMG in the entire game and in the runner-up for some of the worst weapons usable in the base game. Uh, they state that this weapon just did not match performance with the other LMGs at all. They reduced its base recoil, they reduced its spread, they reduced its recoil multiplier from 6 bullets to 4, and they increased its damage on all ranges. They don't specifically list what they did to the damage model, but I would personally like to see this weapon have a 3 bullet to kill range between like, I don't know, maybe 0 and 20 meters, just because of how low its RPM is. That's how it was in Battlefield 3, and they should definitely honor that in this game. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and, of course, like the video. We're inching ever so closely to 33,000 subs. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter for updates, link is in the description. I also stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. First link in the description. And, of course, join the Discord to interact with the community. I will see you guys in the next one.